I'm sure we're live. I'm sure we're live. But I want to make sure it actually says we are live before I start. It's still saying live video is starting. Come on, everything was going so nice and smoothly. Let me just start pasting my, oh, I'm live. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I honestly thought it was going to say it could not. Hey, okay, so as always, I'm behind, but I'm just fighting this thing, whatever this thing is. I don't know why I'm always so stinking tired. I don't know. I just had a thought the last night thinking, um, if you didn't already know, I wear a denture. If you didn't know and you know now, I'm going to have to kill you. But anyways, I'm just kidding. Um, because I got that parcel on the bottom, if I put it in first, then my top doesn't want to stay in. So I use like that effort in stuff to kind of glue it in place, right? And I forgot that some of them have zinc in them. And I forgot that if I use it too much, that, that can make me sick. So I've been putting my top denture in first and let it get a good suction. I know y'all really don't need to hear this is like way more information than you need. But if any of y'all are in the medical field, this might make sense. You might be able to help me figure out why I'm always just feeling like hammered crap. I wish I did drugs or drink. At least that would make sense. Uh, but anyways, um, so I'm using, doing the, the opposite, you know, I'm putting my top in and getting a good suction and then put my bottom in, my parcel in at the bottom. So that way I don't have to use the, the fix it in or polygrip or whatever the heck it's called. And I'm going to see if that makes any difference. I'm still waiting to hear from the doctor. I had my labs drawn, was it yesterday? Day before yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I had to go to Kingfisher and have my labs drawn. Uh, get blood work done. I had to take my son to the doctor, but I had to get my lab work done, too. I had to get my blood drawn. See, that's the thing my daughter didn't know, either. I'd been taking this potassium. I had never stopped taking it, really. But I, he had me double up on what I had been taking for a week, and then he was going to have me come and have my blood drawn to check my potassium level. And I'm still waiting to hear about that. And I don't know if I have to continue taking this potassium or, or what, but anyway. So there's that. So anyways, last night I just was, that trip to Kingfisher always just wipes me out, but that doubly wiped me. So this reading is going to be what would have been the second part of, to, uh, see, today is Mondays. And then since I'm actually feeling a little more energetic than usual, I'm going to go ahead and do to yesterday's tonight and it'll be after midnight of course and then uh, to get as many down as I can so I can get caught up because I really want to do some other videos besides this that I usually do and I still before it starts getting too cold need to get out on the street ministry and Toby get off your sister quit that <sighs> sorry they're kittens he doesn't know what he's doing he just thinks he knows what he's doing in case he figures out what he's wanting to do. I don't want him to figure out. Anyways, our insight scriptures for today, and she's not in heat, so I don't know what he thinks he's doing. Uh, insight scriptures, John, they're like six months old. So, I mean, come on. John 5, 16 through 23, and then the the reading for today, or for Monday, the sec, yeah, the second part with the Light Bible Study for Monday was... Exodus 39 and 40, and then Matthew 23, verses 23 through 39. So it says in John 5, Jesus had just performed a remarkable miracle by healing a man disabled for 38 years. This feat indisputably established Jesus' unprecedented power, yet he encountered controversy despite the miracle. When challenged by religious critics, the Lord didn't grow defensive as we might have, as I know I would have. 
nor did he flaunt his great power. Though we are often, you know, I read, what, four lines, and I'm already getting sleepy. Can you believe Satan? Wow. Nor did he flaunt his great power. Though we are often tempted to boast of our abilities, instead, the one who created everything directed attention away from his, let me get my mouse ready, sorry, own remarkable works and toward his heavenly father. Am I tempted to take credit for my abilities and deeds? Do I feel a need to vindicate myself? When we understand our inherent dependence on God, we are far less likely to boast in our accomplishments or to retaliate in the face of opposition. And this was written by Tim Gustafson. That's kind of like my Praying Warriors page. I say mine. See, there I go. Um, I think it's it's... I think it's over 1,700 members now. If not, it's just under. And it's not from anything I did. It's all God. Um, back in 2020, when we the, when we left our old church before we went back briefly, and then we just left it for good, uh, just this this just year, this year actually. Um, but we had gone back in 21. But it just wasn't the same. But anyways, but when we had left it in 2020, I didn't have, I don't know, how many followers on the Praying Warriors page that was strictly for prayer requests. Because when I first started doing my uh, videos online, on like YouTube, actually I started out doing them on Facebook and then I started a YouTube channel. It was just for, mostly it was going to be for like prayer request. And then it was for whatever God put on my heart to talk about. And as I was learning stuff, I would share it. You know, whatever I felt God wanted me to share. And then after we left the church in 2020, it was a big old thing that happened. Just because Satan is such a liar. Um, my and I see I just keep doing it, the Praying Warriors page that I had felt led to open, God just exploded it. I mean, it's like within, oh, I don't know, a month, it doubled. It doubled in the amount of people that was following it. And now it's up to like 1,600 and something or 1,700. And then I also have a smaller Praying Warriors group that's part of it as well. And now that only has like 300 and something members, but I've been kind of neglecting them. But thankfully, where I've been lacking other members of those pages and of the Praying Warriors group, they have started posting things on that page to keep it going. So other people that are members of the Praying Warriors page have stepped up and started putting stuff to, to keep it going. Uh, a positive place for people to go to and I think that's awesome because I'll go and check on it you know and I I have certain things that I post on you know Shabbat that I post for them you know the Aaronic blessing and and different things and I have it to alert me if I if we have a new follower and I'll go and welcome and all this and and I'll go on there and I'll see all these posts these positive things that people have posted and it's really phenomenal but that's, that made me think of that because I never want to take credit for any of that because I didn't do that. God did. I just, I just basically did what I felt led for him, that he wanted me to do, and he just kind of took it from there. So that's what I get from that. Anyways, a whole lot of talking about that. But, but you know, it's real easy for us to try to take credit, but we should learn from King Nebuchadnezzar not to do that. We saw what happened to him. And personally, I love salad, but I don't like the taste of grass. Anyway, that was kind of a bad joke. I'm sorry. But we could learn from Nebuchadnezzar. John 5, 16 through 23. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. Equality with God and nature. But Jesus answered them. My father has been working until now, and I have been working. 
Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God, equality with God in power. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. Grab it, pillow to sit on. <clears throat> Equality with God and authority. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Eh, he, mm, he who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Amen. So today's story is, or this story, oh, it's 11-11. Hey, I just happened to look. Um, declaring dependence. Hey, so some of y'all are starting to see. Yeah, are starting to see. You know, you may have seen me post on my Facebook how I'll be doing whatever, and I'll just happen to look at the time, and it'll be 11, 11, 10, 10, 12, 12, 2, 22, 3, 33. Yesterday, I saw it was 4, 44, and then I turn around again, and I look, and, and I just happened to look at the time. I wasn't, like, watching the time. I just happened to look down, and it's, oh, it's 5.55 today. James and I were practicing the songs we're going to do a week from today, uh, God willing, you know, uh, at church for praise and worship. And I just happened to look over at the big screen where I had the lyrics at, with the, the keys and everything, the notes for him, and it was 444. He goes, you said that yesterday. And I said, I keep seeing these numbers. CCR, CR witnessing, because you'll hear me. I keep saying it. So see, I, will, I wasn't lying when I say I keep seeing these numbers, especially 1111. I see that a lot. Anyway. The story is called Declaring Dependence. Laura's mom was battling cancer. One morning, Laura prayed for her with a friend. Her friend, who had been disabled for years by cerebral palsy, prayed, Lord, you do everything for me. Please do everything for Laura's mother. Laura was deeply moved by her friend's declaration of dependence on God. Reflecting on the moment, she said, how often do I acknowledge my need for God in everything? It's something I should do every day. During his days on earth, Jesus demonstrated continual dependence on his Heavenly Father. One might think that because Jesus is God in a human body, he would have the best of all reasons to be self-sufficient. But when the religious authorities asked him to give a reason for working, on a legally ordained day of rest because he healed someone on the Sabbath, he responded, Very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his Father doing. Uh, hello? John 5.19 Jesus declared his dependence as well. Jesus' reliance on the Father sets the ultimate example of what it means to live in a relationship with God. Every moment we draw breath is a gift from God. Amen. And he wants our lives to be filled with his strength. When we live to love and serve him through our moment-by-moment -moment prayer and reliance on his word, we are declaring our dependence on him. And this was written by James Banks. And man, there's, there's no lie about every breath we draw is a gift from God. Because I just faithful. Seven months ago, good Lord, I cannot believe it's already been seven months, my son's dad passed. I mean, we knew he had liver cancer. Uh, they were they were looking at, he was looking into seeing about getting a certain type of treatment that might, you know, take, and he was on the transplant list until they discovered the cancer. But, I mean, he was on the transplant list even though he had the cancer. But then they discovered that it had spread to his lymph nodes. And so that took him off the transplant list um, or something to that nature. And, you know, I had no idea how bad it was because he didn't tell me. And 
you know, it's just like I turned around twice and I'm getting a call from my youngest son to let me know his dad passed. His dad died. I mean, just, just like that, gone. And so you just never know. You just never know when it's your time. Um, so, yeah, every breath we draw. And, you know, one thing we have to keep in mind at all times is, are we right with God? If we were to die right now and stood before God, for Jesus, and he was to judge us, would we, you know, would we be standing before him at the Bema seat, our spirit, until the resurrection? Or would our spirit be in hell? You know, we need to know, I mean, do we truly have a confession in Jesus? Are we truly saved? Do we truly believe, without a doubt, that he is the Son of God and that he died and rose again? Do we repent often? Do we repent daily? Do we repent whenever we sin? Do we know that we've sinned because we feel the Holy Spirit convicting us? Do we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if we died right now, we would be in the presence of God? If any of those things, if you have any doubts in your mind about any of that, don't wait because we have no promise of tomorrow. And with everything going on in the Middle East, and now you've got Turkey involved, you've got China, you've got Russia, you've got all these countries that it talks about in Ezekiel 38 that would be surrounding Israel and coming against Israel. The epitome of the prophecy of Ezekiel 38 is transpiring right before our eyes. And now Turkey is, is talking about getting involved. Iran is, is modern-day Persia, right? And if you read Ezekiel 38 and then you look at the news of what's going on in the Middle East, and I don't mean the fake news. I mean, look up Israel News 7 or Emir Safadi or someone that will tell you the truth. Actually, Watchmen on the Mall, uh, Watchmen on the Wall with Eric Steckelbeck is the best, is, is a good one to listen to. And Emir Safadi, uh, especially if you listen to him on Telegram, because he'll give you news about what's going on because he lives there. Pardon me before you'll ever hear it on YouTube. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off on that tangent, but people just do not realize how close we are to the rapture, just how close we are to the the, the Antichrist coming on the scene. Anyways, that's why I need to get these done and, and get back to my end times eschatology videos and whatnot. Reflect and pray. I need you for everything, Lord. We need you for everything, Lord. Help us to live to serve you. We praise you for being our Savior and our strength. Prayerlessness is our declaration of independence from God. Speaking of which, I forgot to pray. Daniel Henderson. Father, forgive me for that. Father, we do love you and we do praise you and we do honor you with our lips and with our heart and with our soul and everything that we have for you're worthy to be praised we thank you for the life that you gave us and the breath that you give us and every day that we wake up lord is a blessing and we truly do thank you for that lord we thank you for your mercy and for your grace because lord we know we don't deserve it for our righteousness is as filthy rags but because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, Lord, we know that through his blood, we are made righteous. Thank you for loving us that much to give your only son. For becoming man, becoming flesh, and dying in our place. Father God. We have sins in our lives that we may not even be aware of. And I just ask that you bring them to our remembrance so that we can repent of them or forgive us for them, Lord. Because I know there's probably many. A thought, a word, a deed. It's too many to count. But I know that their grace covers them. And I know that the love that you have for us 
covers a multitude of sins, and we thank you for that. Father, I ask that you bless the reading of your word, always. Help us to gain full understanding and knowledge, discernment, and wisdom when we read your word, Lord, so that we'll know without a doubt what it is that you're saying to our hearts, so that when we share it with others, we can do it in confidence. I know that we're not adding to or taking away from your word, but we're sharing what the Holy Spirit's put on our hearts to share. And we ask this and pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so we're reading the last two chapters of Exodus. So this is 39. And it's it's talking about making the priest garments. Some more. Uh, So the first 31 verses is, uh, while on Mount Sinai, God gave Moses very detailed instructions on how to make the holy garments for the priests who serve in the tabernacle. In this chapter, we read about the creation of those garments. The ephod of the high priest was made of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen. Two onyx stones containing the names of the tribes of Israel were attached to the shoulder pieces of the ephod. A breastplate, a breast piece, was made in the style of the ephod, and just in case, the ephod was was worn on the breast, and it had the 12 different stones, one each one representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And it's also where they put the, I think it was called the Uman and the Thuman, or Uman and Thuman, something like that, which if, like we were studying First Samuel 23, and like if David needed to inquire something of the Lord, the priest would reach inside the, 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 the ephod, and whatever he pulled out, depending on what color or what he pulled out, it would mean it would be, you know, whether it was a yes or no. Um, I'm sure we're going to get f- into that. I'm going to post that, that video in the comment section after this video is over. Uh, Because it'd be too hard to do it now. Uh, That shows how they made these garments. And it'll also explain more about the Uman and the Thurman. Every time I say that, I think of Uma Thurman. I think that's her name. So that's why I'm trying to get confused on those. But anyways, I'll share that with y'all. So the ephod of the high priest was made of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen. Two onyx stones containing the names of the tribes of Israel were attached to the shoulder pieces of the ephod. Okay, so it's actually going to explain it to you here. <laughs> I'm such a dork. A breast piece was made in the style of the ephod. It contains four rows of precious stones, 12 stones total. The breast piece was attached to the ephod with gold cords. A robe of blue was made for the high priest, and on its hem were hung small woven pomegranates and golden bells. In case you didn't know why they had bells on them, it's because whenever they went into the Holy of Holies, if for any reason the the priest was not truly sanctified, he would be killed immediately. And so as long as they heard the bells ringing on his robe, because at, for what, at first they would tie them around their ankles, but here you see that they've got them. Well, actually, I was taught that they tied them around their ankles, but you can read right here that they actually put it on the the end of the robes. But but sometimes they would ha- tie. I was told that they would tie it around their ankle to a rope or whatever, so that that way, if the bell ever stopped ringing, they could just or maybe they tied the rope around their ankles. I'm gonna have to check that out because I some stuff I've been taught was not right, so. Um, but here it's talking about the bells, and I know that this, if they heard that, if they didn't, if the bell stopped ringing, they knew that the priest was dead, and they would have to pull them out of the Holy of Holies, because you sir couldn't go in there, because you would be dead, too, if you were not truly sanctified, you know, like, because there's a special purification process they had to go through, whoever's turn it was, to go into the Holy of Holies and, and do the sacrifice and whatnot. So the craftsman also created the turban in gold crown or plate. The gold plate was attached to the turban with a blue cord. That's probably the cord I was thinking of. Additional garments were made for the high priest's sons who were to assist him in his work. 
the pieces of the tabernacle are completed, and this is verses 32 through 43. After what was apparently several months, all the pieces of the tabernacle were completed, and the people brought them to Moses. Verses 33 to 41 provide a list of each item created. We've discussed each of these items at length in previous chapters, chapter summaries. Each article was created according to the instructions God gave to Moses on Sinai. Moses blessed the people for their work. making the garments of the priesthood. So of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, they made garments of ministry for ministering in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron, as the Lord had commanded Moses. Making the ephod. Oh, making the ephod. He made the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and a fine woven linen, and they beat the gold, into thin sheets and cut it into threads to work it in with the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine linen into artistic designs. I wondered how they did that. They made shoulder straps for it to couple it together. It was coupled together at its two edges and the intricately woven band of the sea pod that was on it was of the same workmanship woven of gold, purple, blue, purple, and scarlet thread and of fine woven linen as the Lord had commanded Moses. And they set onyx stones enclosed in settings of gold. They were engraved as signets are engraved with the names of the sons of Israel. He put them on the shoulders of the ephod as memorial stones. Wow. Gosh. All right, bear with me. I thought I just got an ambient out, and I don't see it, and I hope to God it didn't just fall on the floor because I don't want the kittens to accidentally take it, eat it. <sighs> hmm. Okay, I'm just, I'm just crack it. Okay. <sighs> Dang it. He made the breastplate artistically woven like the workmanship of the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread in a fine woven linen. They made the breastplate square by doubling it. A span was its length and a span its width when doubled. And they set it in four rows of stones, a row with a sardius, a topaz. Ah, 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 whoa. And an emerald was the first row. The second row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond. The third row, a jace, a jacinth, jace, jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst. The fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in settings of gold in their mountings. There were twelve stones according to the names of the sons of Israel, according to their names engraved like a signet each one with its own name according to the twelve tribes. And they made chains for the breastplate at the ends, like braided cords of pure gold. They also made two sets, two settings of gold and two gold rings, and put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two braided chains of gold and the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. The two ends of the two braided chains they fastened to in the two settings and put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod in the front. And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate on the edge of it, which was on the inward side of the ephod. They made two other gold rings and put them on the two shoulder straps underneath the ephod toward its front right at the seam above the intricately woven band of the ephod. And they bound the breastplate by means of its rings to the rings of the ephod with a blue cord, so that it would be above the intricately woven band of the ephod, and that the breastplate would not come loose from the ephod as the Lord had commanded Moses, making the other priestly garments. He made the robe of the ephod of woven work all of blue. And there was an opening in the middle of the robe, like the opening in a coat of mail. 
with a woven binding all around the opening so that it would not tear. They made on the hem of the robe pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet, and of fine woven linen. And they made bells of pure gold, and put the bells between the pomegranates on the hem of the robe all around between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate. A bell and a pomegranate all around the hem of the robe to minister in as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now I'm going to check that real quick. I'm going to see what my study Bible says about that. That's 26. Okay. Here we go. A lot of red. Okay, so 39.26 says, It was at his ascension that our great high priest passed into the heavenly sanctuary and consequent upon this on the day of Pentecost. His sound was heard in the outpouring of the Spirit which was carried by the apostles, ultimately to the ends of the earth. The fruit is seen in the multitudes who have been saved. Even more glorious will be his sound and fruit when he comes out again and returns to this earth and redeems his people, Israel, and sets up his kingdom. Even though this robe was worn by the high priest of Israel, the very embodiment of the Levitical law still, this is most important, for it defines the essential nature of Christianity as contra distinguished from Judaism, Ju Judea Judaism. <laughs> the whole system takes its character from the priest. Because Christ is the heavenly priest, his people are partakers of a heavenly calling, Hebrews 3.1, and our inheritance is also there. Okay, I know it says, right, I know it says something about that, though, about the bell. Yeah, well, okay. Of course, the bell rang when the priest walked around. Well, I'll find where I read that. I don't know. I know I, I know. I remember covering that, though, and seeing that about talking about the bells and why. And I know that there was a rope or something to pull them out if they died. So, okay. This is the Lord had commanded Moses. All right, so, so they made tunics artistically woven of fine linen for Aaron and his sons, a turban of fine linen, exquisite hats of fine linen, short trousers of fine woven linen, and a sash of fine woven linen with blue, purple, and scarlet thread made by a weaver as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote on it an, an inscription like the engraving of a signet. Holiness to the Lord. And they tied to it a blue cord to fasten it above on the turban of the commandment Moses. Hold on. I need to straighten my hair today and it's like all curly and frizzy and fly away and getting wrapped up in my headset and pulling it out. It hurts. The work completed. Thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses. So they did. And they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its furnishings, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars and its sockets, the covering of ram skins, dyed red, the covering of badger skins, and the veil of the covering, <laughs> the ark of the testimony with its poles and the mercy seat. The table, all its utensils, and the showbread. The pure gold lampstand with its lamps. The lamp set in order, all its utensils, and the oil for light. The gold altar, the anointing oil, and the sweet incense. The screen for the tabernacle door. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bella's got her little baby that she plays with. 
when she was a little kitten. I remember she's this little bitty thing, man. She, I heard this growling. I couldn't imagine what it was, and it was her. She had that toy, and her other sister, Tabitha, the one that passed away. It was so sad. She was the, the runt. She was over there, and she was by the drums, and Bella was hunched down over this toy, this little rat thing, and growling at her sister not to try to take her toy, and she's very protective of it now. See, here comes Toby. He's going to try to take her toy, and she will end him for it. <laughs> it's too cute. Sorry. And the oil for light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, and the sweet incense. The screen for the tabernacle door is just distracting, that's all. The bronze altar, it's great of bronze, its poles, and all its utensils. The laver with its base, oh boy, now they're going to be chasing each other up and down the stairs. <laughs> James going to love that. <laughs> the hangings of the court, its pillar and its sockets. The screen for the court gate, its cords and its pegs, all the utensils. For the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting, and the garments of ministry, to minister in the holy place. The holy garments for Aaron the priest, and his son's garments to minister as priests. According to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did all the work. Then Moses looked over all the work, and indeed they had done it, as the Lord had commanded, just so they had done it. And Moses blessed them. Okay, and then chapter, the last chapter of Exodus, the tabernacle is erected. First 33 verses of chapter 40. Let's see, God told Moses to bring all the pieces of the tabernacle together and erect the tent on the first day of the first month. Moses erected the tabernacle. He laid its bases and set up its frames and put its poles and raised up its pillars. The Ark of the Covenant was put in the interior room, the most holy place, and the stone tablets of the testimony were placed inside the ark. The mercy seat was set above the ark. A veil separated the most holy place from the holy place. The holy place contained the altar of incense, the golden table on which was placed the bread of the presence and the golden lampstand. A screen covered the entrance to the tent. The Israelites erected the pillars and curtains of the courtyard and put the bronze star... I'm sorry, bronze altar, a burnt offerings, and the bronze basin for washing within the court. When everything was in place, Moses was to take the holy anointing oil and anoint everything in the tabernacle and in the court. Aaron and his sons were also to be anointed because they were to be the priests who served in the tabernacle. God's glory fills the tabernacle, verses 34 through 38. When Moses and the people finished constructing and consecrating the structure, the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all the journeys of the Israelites, the pillar of cloud remained over the tabernacle during the day, and a pillar of fire was over it at night. Whenever the pillar of cloud lifted off the tabernacle and began moving, the Israelites would break camp and follow it to their next destination. Whoa, move, cat. Let's string you down. Oh, shoot. What am I doing? Okay, here we go. All right. The tabernacle erected and arranged. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put it in the ark of the testimony and partition off the ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table and arrange the things that are to be set in order on it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and light its lamps. You shall also set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony and put up the screen for the door of the tabernacle then you shall set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and you shall set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water in it you shall set up the court all around and hang up the screen at the court gate and you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it and you shall hallow it and all its utensils, and it shall be holy. You shall anoint the altar of the burnt offerings and all its utensils and consecrate the altar. The altar shall be most holy, and you shall anoint the labor and its base and consecrate it. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and wash them with water. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priest. 
and you shall bring his sons and clothe them with tunics. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father, that they may minister to me as priests. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus Moses did, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he did. And it came to pass in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was raised up. So Moses raised up the tabernacle, fastened its sockets, set up its boards, put in its bars, and raised up its pillars. And he spread out the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent on top of it. The heck? As the Lord had commanded Moses, he took the testimony and put it into the ark, inserted the poles through the rings of the ark, and put the mercy seat on top of the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle, hung up the veil of the covering, and partitioned off the ark of the testimony as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the table in the tabernacle of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the veil, and he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tabernacle of meeting across from the table on the south side of the tabernacle, and he lit the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the gold altar in the tabernacle of meeting in front of the veil, and he burned sweet incense on it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He hung up the screen at the door of the tabernacle, and he put the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and offered upon it the burnt offering and the grain offering as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set the labor between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water there for washing. And Moses, Aaron, and his sons would wash their hands and their feet with water from it. Whenever they went into the tabernacle of meeting and when they came near the altar, they washed as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he raised up the court all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the screen of the court gate. So Mo Moses finished the work, the cloud and the glory. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward. Sorry, I just lost my spot. Ah! Uh, in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and the fire was over it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Okay. Seven. All right, and then final reading for this is Matthew 23, verses 23 through 39. I shut the door because there's no reading this calmly. Because Jesus really lets them have it with both barrels. Why are you cats trying to bite through this water bottle? Oh my gosh, here. You want some water? Here. They try to bite through my bottled water. It's so weird. I have weird cats. They have fresh water already in their bowl, but they want to drink it out of my bottle. You're so silly. Toby, do not bite your sister. Okay. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law justice and mercy and faith these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautifully outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore, you are witnesses against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous bloodshed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Jesus laments over Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who were sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Baruch HaBab Hashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that concludes the reading for Monday. And I will go ahead and get started on yesterday's and at least half of today's uh, since I'll be up for a while. Um, so, shalom, shalom for now. I love you. Jesus loves you. And I shall return as quick as I can.